Fred. Hello, Woody. Goodbye, Woody. <laughs> Sanford and Son absolutely delighted audiences from 1972 to 1977, despite its stiff competition. The sitcom followed Fred Sanford and his son Lamont through their day-to-day -day lives in Shake and Bake, USA. I mean, Los Angeles, California. Last time you settled your stomach, it was so settled you couldn't move. Together, the father-son duo and their cast of supporting characters actually managed to drive the Brady Bunch off the air. And Sanford and Son actually peaked at number two on the TV charts twice throughout its run. He that liveth by the sword shall be stuck. Even though the hit show aired in the Friday Night Death Spot. Originally a British TV show, the show found its place with American audiences by the millions. That's right, Othello. A black man with an Italian name? The cast of the 70s sitcom were household names when Sanford and Son was on the air. But where are those beloved faces now? Some had legal disputes, some went on to write books, and some even went on to star in their own, short-lived, spin-offs. So don't worry. Stick around, and you won't have a heart attack just from the suspense of not knowing. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming, honey. You probably already know that Red Fox played Fred Sanford, the titular character of the 70s sitcom. You may even know that he was 49 when the show started airing, a full decade younger than his on-screen character. But did you know that Red Fox is actually a stage name? The actor's real name is, get this, actually John Sanford. That's right. Fred Sanford was actually named for Red Fox's older brother. Talk about a family show. Still, he had his fair share of trouble on set. During the filming of the season that ran from 73 to 74, Red Fox claimed he was experiencing health issues and walked off set, refusing to complete his scenes. That wasn't the whole truth, though. Elizabeth, if you looking down on all this, honey, no look. Fox actually had an issue with his salary. He was written out of the rest of the season. With all what he had to put up with, Fox wanted 25% ownership of the series instead of the $19,000 flat rate per episode he was receiving at the time. As a response to his request, Tandem Production sued Fox for $10 million because he stopped showing up to tapings. In the end, they reached a compromise. Fox would receive $25,000 per episode and 25% of the profits producers made from the show. Still, it's ridiculous that on a show that spoke so heavily on racial injustice, Producers weren't willing to pay their lead actor a competitive rate. Fox eventually left for a better offer anyway. He was given his own variety show called the Red Fox Comedy Hour. In the 80s, Fox reprised his role again in a very short-lived spin-off called Sanford. He appeared in a few other TV shows throughout his on-screen career, then eventually ran a business called Red Fox's Car Velvetizing, where he would add a velvet texture to the roofs of cars. Unfortunately, Fox encountered more financial trouble throughout his life. Partially, that was because of his expensive lifestyle and poor money management. But his three divorces also took a heavy toll on his finances. He paid his ex-wives hundreds of thousands in his divorce settlements and ended up filing for bankruptcy in 1983. Throughout the proceedings, the IRS filed liens on most of his properties, and they actually seized his home in Las Vegas, Nevada in 1989. Fox said that during the process, he wasn't treated like he was human at all. Supposedly, when Fox died, he owed over $3.6 million in unpaid taxes. The actor passed in 1991 when he had a heart attack on the set for The Royal Family. They actually thought he was faking at first. He had just had an incident with one of the show's producers, and he collapsed right after filming a scene. This is a bad one. Oh! Since Fred Sanford had so many fake heart attacks on Sanford & Son, it wasn't until his co-star, Della Reese, checked on him that they realized something was wrong. He was 68 at the time. Fox may have been unlucky in love, but his co-star, Demond Wilson, has been married to his wife since 1974. The couple have six children together. Wilson was 25 when he played Lamont Sanford, a young man just as frustrated with his father's antics as he was likely to get into his own. He stuck around through the full series, receiving top billing after Fox's temporary departure. Hold it up to your right ear and push it through to your left. Despite his success on the show, Wilson was uninterested in reprising his role in the 1980 revival. Wilson's later Hollywood career was largely quiet. He was in a few films like Full Moon High and Me and the Kid. He also starred in the 1980s revival of The New Odd Couple. He didn't keep in touch with anyone after Sanford and Son ended. 
In particular, he took issue with the fact that Fox hadn't told him before he walked away from the Sanford & Son set. He said, I had no animosity toward Fox because I had a million dollar contract at CBS to do Baby, I'm Back. My hurt was that he didn't come to me about throwing the towel in. I found out in the hallway at NBC from a newscaster. I forgave him and I loved Red, but I never forgot that. Pop, if you're gonna have friends over here, you gotta give them a little something to eat. Not them friends. The love was there. You can watch any episode and see that. He detailed his onset experiences with Fox in his memoir, Second Banana, The Bittersweet Memoirs of the Sanford and Son Years. Wilson did, however, find himself a whole new career in writing Christian books about the dangers of New Age practices and spirituality. In 1998, he released New Age Millennium, a book about exposing New Age symbols and slogans and the dangers he believes are lurking within them. Now 76, he is worth an estimated $1.5 million. Wilson may have been religious in real life, but in Sanford and Son, it was Aunt Esther who was constantly quoting the Bible. Fred's late wife's sister was played by LaWanda Page and was 52 when she first appeared in the sitcom. She was childhood friends with Red Fox, who called her up with the opportunity. She didn't believe him. She actually hung up on him twice before finally hearing him out. She had some trouble adjusting to the format at first, since she had mostly worked in the nightclub comedy scene, and she was almost fired. But Fox stuck his neck out for her. He made it clear that if she was fired, he would walk too, and the rest is history. Why should I be embarrassed? I got everything it takes to win that contest. It's crazy to think we almost had somebody else in the iconic role of Aunt Esther. But in the end, Paige was the only real choice. You may not know that she actually continued her role after the end of Sanford and Son in a spin-off called Sanford and Arms. Unfortunately, the show only lasted four episodes before its cancellation. She again tried in Sanford, but that was soon canceled too. In between, she played plenty of other roles on shows like Family Matters, Martin, and Different Strokes. She also appeared in movies like My Blue Heaven and Zapped, and she had a career as a professional fire eater and a singer. She was even on RuPaul's debut album. Talk about a well-rounded personality. We have a home and a business, and no one to give it to when we pass on. Throughout her life, Paige was married and widowed on three separate occasions. She had one daughter named Clara, who ended up becoming an evangelistic preacher. She was worth an estimated $500,000 when she passed in 2001 at 81 years old from a heart attack. The cast of Sanford & Son was just as interesting across the board as their characters were. We would have had a very different show without Red Fox. After all, he got more than just LaWanda Page cast on the show. Slappy White, Pat Morita, Gregory Sierra, and Don Bexley were just a few of his friends he pulled into the show. He consistently used his connections to round out the cast and pull the people he knew up to the top with him. Sanford & Son may have had a completely different name without Fox. So it's a shame that the producers weren't willing to give him due credit for all he did. The dichotomy between Wilson and Paige's real-life personalities and on-screen characters just adds even more layers to the show. It's crazy to think that they ended up playing one another in the end. Whether you're familiar with the family or just enjoy exploring the annals of history, I can think of but two things, run and fail. Sanford and Son is sure to be one cast of characters you'll never forget as long as you live. And I hope that, in the end, we'll all be a little bit more like Fred Sanford.